house the Lord tonight. We ask that you uh, set much in prayer for us. Had a pretty tough day uh, today at work, but uh, we know the Lord's uh, more than able to take care of us, and we're going to trust in Him tonight. Thankful for the safety that He gave us uh, on our travels today, and um, even uh, on our way here. Um, for those that are here from Woodstock, uh, Sis Monroe that sang tonight will be singing at our homecoming. And she told me tonight she'll be bringing a cornbread salad. Now, finally a salad that I can get behind. Amen. It's got lettuce and cucumbers and tomatoes and ranch dressing, but it's got cornbread too. Now, you can't beat that now. So we are excited about that. Thank you for coming to be with us tonight. And uh, those that's been praying uh, down through the week, um, it was here uh, last night, uh, uh, Brother Hampton did a fantastic job uh, preaching about the attitude of the church. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I think that message needed to be preached more than, uh, than what it was. We, uh, he brought out so many truths uh, last night in that uh, message. Uh, and we prayed the Lord be with us tonight. Brother Ray uh, Boggs preached Sunday night over at Woodstock. And he preached on um, this um, scripture out of uh, the book of John, the fourth chapter of the book of John, a very familiar scripture about the woman at the well. And uh, I, th I thought it did a fantastic job. Uh, Lord blessed me and uh, gave me some different uh, thoughts and ideas. I uh, woke up Monday morning blessed, and at about 5.30, my phone dinged, and it was Brother Ray. And he said, boy, I sure blew it last night. He said, boy, I just didn't get that preached at all. And he said, I just feel like I didn't get uh, much of a job done at all. And I texted him, I said, are you kidding me? I said, man, I, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, but preachers, you know what, we're, uh, what he's talking about. Sometimes we just don't feel like we get it out like the Lord gave it to us. But, uh, but it will um, go forth and bless his people. Amen. And Amen. Uh, we're thankful for that. And I uh, would like to uh, look at that scripture tonight. And I'm going to concentrate mainly on one verse, but in uh, the fourth chapter of the book of John, and uh, starting reading in verse 7, it says, And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. And they saith to the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me? which am a, Samarit or a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to, you, to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have, have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And verse 11 is where I'd like to concentrate for just a few moments tonight and it said, and the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living water? I was reading that scripture today at work and, and uh, was uh, reading through some uh, different uh, scriptures on my computer. And there's a young man that uh, started working with us. And, and, uh, and uh, I was uh, uh, starting to feel... The Holy Spirit move upon us, and boy, the big old uh, goosebumps come up on my arms, and and I started to get a little excited, and and he uh, kind of didn't know what to think of that, and he asked me, he said, "Are you okay?" And I told him, I said, "Boy, I'm doing better than I have all day," and and it's a uh, uh, good to know uh, that the Lord still moves and can come to where we are, amen, and we know that, uh, uh, think about this, and as we have heard preached so many times, Brother Jim, that, that this woman uh, uh, would have found herself there at the well and about the noon hour and the heat of the day and knowing that usually they would go very early in the morning to draw their water uh, while it was yet cool but because of the lifestyle that she lived and, and because of the uh, rejection probably of the other women as they would come and, and maybe how they would talk about her and, and point her out that, uh, uh, that she found it easier just to come uh, uh, even when it wasn't comfortable uh, uh, that she would come to draw the water and, and 
And but this time uh, we see that uh, uh, that she had come there, and Jesus knew that there was a need in the land, and and that He had come uh, and met that woman. Aren't you glad to know tonight uh, uh, that when you was in need, uh, uh, Jesus knew where you was, uh, uh, man? Even if it wasn't where you were supposed to be, uh, uh, He knew where you was, uh, and He knew where to find you, uh, and He knew what it was that you needed. Uh, and we see how Brother Jay uh, uh, that He says to this woman, uh, uh, "Give me to drink," uh, and she, thinking in the natural sins, uh, uh, said, uh, uh, "Why is it that a Jew would ask of a Samaritan woman? Uh, uh, because you have no dealing with us." Uh, uh, you know what? Satan will take uh, a sinner to the exact same place. Uh, uh, basically, what she was saying, Jim, even uh, uh, before she realized this was Christ, uh, uh, just recognizing him as a Jew, uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, "You're." you guys don't like my people and you know what Satan will tell your lost loved ones and my lost loved ones that God has done with them they've made too many mistakes that there is no going back they can't come back home but can I tell you my friend there's never been a mistake made that you can't repent of that Jesus is not mad at you. God's not mad at you, but he loves you tonight. Praise God. Even in our impurity, he sees us for who we are, and he loves us for what we are. Even being an old sinner, not even loving ourselves, but Jesus still loved us, and he loves you tonight. But we see here how he said, if you would know who it was Uh, praise God that you was talking to Uh, he said you would have asked me uh, for a drink uh, and and I would have given you that living water Uh, and that's where I'd like to take my thought tonight uh, of what this woman said Uh, she said where did you get this water amen Uh, because she said uh, the well is deep uh, and you don't have anything to draw it with Uh, where did this water come from Uh, where did you get Get this water. I may have rehearsed this before, but when I was a younger man, I would go down to the restaurant with my dad for breakfast, and we'd come in, and they would come right over to the table and pour him a cup of coffee. But they would just walk right by me and go back to the kitchen. I remember asking dad one time. I said, "Why is it they always bring you coffee?" But I've always got to ask for it. He said, well, you didn't turn your cup over. He said, how are they know to fill it up if you don't turn your cup over? Hey, listen, but we come to the house of God hey, with our cup turned upside down and wonder why God didn't bless him. Hey, I believe, Brother Jay, that we need to come ready to receive him, to receive his water. I like the old song that said, I'm drinking from the sun saucer because my cup is overflowed. Praise God. He has blessed me beyond measure tonight. Amen. Isn't it good to see and look and see what he does for us here for the last several weeks. The thought, and I know I've said it over and over and over, but the thought keeps rolling through my mind that you just simply cannot outgive God. Amen. Try it sometime. You try to help give God. See how well he blesses you. Amen. Uh, but she, uh, I wanted to know where it was that they, this water came from. Uh, but listen, I want to tell you even tonight, and I never was good with timing, brother, uh, but I'd like to talk tonight about a drought. Uh, I know there's water standing everywhere, uh, but I'm not talking about a natural drought. Uh, I'm talking about a spiritual drought uh, that is in our land. Amen. Uh, I believe there's a great separation of our country 
with God today, amen. And listen, I started to look up uh, some things about a drought. Listen, I want you to listen uh, to what it says. It says uh, a drought happens when there's not enough rain uh, for a long t- period of time. Uh, it is not like a dry spell, amen. Uh, uh, there's times uh, that even as God's people that we can go through a dry spell. Uh, hey, but this is completely different than that. Uh, I'm talking about a spiritual drought in our country. Country. It says uh, uh, that there's so little rain uh, or participation or, uh, or water. It said that the whole region starts to dry out. Uh, uh, listen, it says sometimes a drought takes decades to develop fully, and they are very difficult to predict. And uh, you know what that uh, we even see in today's time uh, that the spiritual drought uh, uh, didn't happen overnight, my brother. Uh, that sometimes it takes decades. Uh, uh, to develop. Uh, you say, what are you talking about, preacher? Uh, I'm talking about, can you remember those uh, that are on in years? You remember back mommy and daddy uh, uh, taking you to church uh, uh, even when it what we didn't have the nice things uh, that we have now. Uh, I've heard stories all my life uh, about how they would have to hitch up the horse uh, and take the wagon down. Uh, how somebody had to get there early uh, to put coal in the stove. Uh, so it would be warm enough to come uh, and worship God but yet uh, the f- house was full uh, people wanted to praise God uh, and then the next generation uh, uh, brothers started to get uh, a little more worldly uh, uh, the world started to take over uh, and now we see uh, that now our children uh, are starting to uh, live uh, a lifestyle away from God uh, in just three generations uh, uh, we have the, the most beautiful churches. Uh, uh, we have air conditioning. Uh, we have furnaces. Uh, we have padded pews. Uh, uh, yet still, uh, the generation doesn't want to come to the house of God. Amen. Because the drought had set in Amen. decades ago. And they've dried out. Listen what else it said. It says when there is a dry spell or a drought, it says the grass begins to turn brown. A dirt patches dry up and cracks form across the surface of the ground. Can I tell you, my friend, that Satan wants to destroy you and your family? He is splitting apart families. He is splitting apart married couples. He is splitting apart a father being in the home and raising children. We see so many that are being raised uh, now by single parents uh, and how difficult that is. He wants to separate them, uh, our children from Sunday school. He wants to separate you from church. He wants to separate you from anything dealing with God and his gospel. It said that cracks start to happen on on the ground. Plants start to die out. The root of the plants which previously anchored uh, soil down can no longer keep the soil from eroding. The dirt is then blown up into the wind causing huge clouds known as dust clouds. Uh, Because they can turn the sky dark, uh, they are sometimes known as black blizzards and can destroy the landscape and your property and can ruin your home. Uh, Can I tell you, my friend, uh, that this spiritual drought has brought forth an evil a blizzard in our America and it is destroying homes it's destroying people it's destroying lives amen and you know what it's got so bad that the lost can't even see brother Jimmy what's happening amen they can't even see that they need the Lord they've been blinded by the drought of this world, by this spiritual drought. Hey, man, I wonder, as this woman sat there at the well, 
in the heat of the day in that climate in that mid or mid-eastern country how hot and how arid it must have been and I wonder even then as she would go and draw that water even that little bit that she felt there how refreshing that must be isn't it funny how when you start to get thirsty and sometimes you'll think boy I'd like to have this I like iced tea and sometimes I think boy I'd like to have a big cup of iced tea but if you continue to work and you continue to labor and then you start to think boy even a little bit brother Frank would be real good and then as you continue on and that thirst starts to grow and you think boy if I could just get a little sup of water it would make me feel so much better let me tell you how far that will take you listen it's said that there was a certain rich man and there was a man named Lazarus man it said and they both died and that rich man went to hell and said lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus there in the bosom of Abraham hey listen what he said would you let him dip his finger hey just one drop of water would be more relief than what I can get where I'm at hey man you ever been that thirsty, Brother Frank, that just that you begged for just one drop of water? Hey, but I'm telling you, our churches are in the same situation. Our people are in the same situation. They become so spiritually thirsty that we need to be begging for just one drop of water. Hey, man. Hey, man. I remember one time. I was mowing my grass. Rain clouds was a coming in. It was about to turn off bad. And I was just about done. Maybe had a strip and a half left. And I'm flying across that backyard. And Brother Jimmy's smiling. You know what happened. That old thing run out of gas bone dry. Hey, Amen. I thought, boy, if I had just a few just a few caps of gas, I could finish this up. Hey man, but there wasn't nothing I could do but go to the station and fill it up again. Praise God, how do we get revived? We gotta go back to God's house and get filled up again so that we can go back out to this lost and dying world and not die of thirst, hey amen. Let me go to Numbers. Chapter 20, again, very familiar scriptures here. Numbers chapter 20, starting with verse 2. And said again, there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode uh, with Moses and, and spake, saying, uh, would God uh, uh, that we would have died when we out, or when out our brethren died uh, before the Lord? And, and, and then why uh, have you brought us up the congregation of the Lord to this wilderness that uh, we and our cattle uh, should be or should die there? And wherefore hath ye made us to come out of Egypt uh, uh, to bring us into uh, this evil place? Uh, uh, it is no place of, of seed or of figs or of Pines, uh, or of pomegranates, uh, neither is there any water to drink. Uh, and Moses and Aaron went from the uh, presence of the, the assembly into the door of the tabernacle uh, of the congregation, and they fell on their face, uh, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Let's see uh, oh, a couple things that's happening right here. Uh, we see that how even after God had delivered these people, uh, that they got their self out and they started to get thirsty, Brother Jim. And they started to murmur and complain. Listen, then they started to look back at the old life and said, Why didn't I just stay where I was? Why didn't I why didn't you just leave us there so that we could die there rather than bringing us out here? And now it seemed like God had left them. Even though it was their rebellion that separated them from from God. But they started to look back. And then even as somebody 
said tonight. And the Bible does say there is fun in sin, but for a season. There is a day of reckoning coming. But when we don't take our eyes off the world and put our eyes on Jesus, we'll start to think back about how it used to be. Amen. Amen. I guess I've been on the way long enough now that I've seen more than I'm heading toward than I've seen behind me. Amen. And it's so much better, Brother Pio, it's so much better looking down the road than it is looking back. But even in the time that they come, and I want you to think of your lost loved ones. I've heard even this week, heard over the last several weeks, those that would request prayer for their loved ones and say, boy, I just can't get them to come to church. They just won't serve the Lord. All they want to do is find fault in the church. We see that they was doing this too because they was thirsty and the human side had taken over. Hey, but listen what happened. It said, now that Moses and Aaron went into the house of God and fell down on their face and prayed out to God on behalf of their people. Hey, praise God, what do we do? We have to cry out in their favor to a God who is still just and merciful that he will provide. Amen. Amen. God answers them and said, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take the rod and gather the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their hives, and it shall give forth water, and, and thou shalt bring for, uh, forth uh, uh, to them water out of the rock, uh, uh, so that they shall give uh, uh, the congregation of their uh, beasts to drink. And Moses uh, uh, took the rod from uh, before the Lord and as, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now ye rebels must ye fetch ye water out of this rock and Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also but listen to verse 12 and it said in the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children uh, of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring these uh, uh, this congregation uh, unto the land which I have given thee. You say, well why did God get mad at Moses for doing what he told him to do? Well he didn't do what God told him to do. If you go back to the book of Exodus, uh, the first time Brother Jay uh, that they started to murmur uh, that time he told uh, Moses to strike the rock and that water would come forth and we know that it did but if you notice this time he said speak to the rock and the water will come through I wonder if God maybe didn't think Moses we've already been through this you should have known what to do Amen. but he told him he said go and speak to the rock Hey, but brother Moses like so many of us he did it but he put his own twist on it Amen. Hey, can I tell you my friend and I'm saying this in the most loving way that I can hey but God don't need your help amen amen he still got it under control brother Bill he don't need your opinion in it he don't need you to add to it or to take away from it. But he said here and that he still they still brought forth rock. Why is it so important that God got upset? Let me tell you, my friend, because it tells me of the rock, that one that was shooting out of the mountain, that cornerstone that the builders rejected, that rock was Jesus Christ our Savior and when he did the work on Calvary it said that he would never have to be crucified again he would never have to be smitten again but he came to freely give that living water he came so that all that are thirsty could come and drink he said if I be lifted up I will draw on 
haven't been unto me. How can I tell you that they lifted him up on that rugged cross and he expanded the gap between earth and the heavens and made interception for you and I so that we could be saved. And not only could we be saved, but our thirst could be quenched. Amen. Amen. I wonder if the world don't look at our lives sometimes. And God blesses us beyond measure and see some of the terrible things that'll happen in our lives. And yet because of his peace and his comfort, we can go on rejoicing because of that living water. I wonder if the world don't sometimes, Brother Jim, and say, where'd you get that water? It's unlike anything I've ever seen. How can you rejoice in the time of the death of your loved one? How can you rejoice in a time of sickness? How can you rejoice in the time of losing a job? Because we have a comforter that came to dwell with us, that gives us peace, not as the world giveth, but as he giveth. He gives us peace. Amen. Amen. I remember being a young man going out and working hay worked uh, some for Sister Linda's dad, how we'd be out there in the field. He didn't use a wagon, did he? He used a dump truck. You had to throw that thing up at about eye level, and we would go out there and work, but then when we get to a truck full and we'd come back to the barn and there was an old uh, well out there and we'd go over and pump that handle and that good cool water come out and we would uh, get us a big drink splash around in it a little bit and we would uh, go back to work and we would work real good up into the heat of the day and then we would he would gather us up we'd come back to the house and there in the yard at a picnic table Sister Linda's mommy would have have a big meal fixed up and we'd sit around the table and boy I'm telling you that was about as good as you could get in my opinion amen because it was refreshing to come out of the working field and be able to find nourishment for your soul amen that's what revival is hey we've been on the battlefield we've been working hard and now it's time to pull up to the master's table and refresh ourselves, amen, amen, with that living water. Not only did he say, I'll give it to you, he said, it'll never run out. Amen, amen. I've got in my backyard an artesian well and I keep it capped off most of the time because of the neighborhood kids, but every once in a while I have to open it up to do something. And boy, I tell you what, you dip something down in there and get into that water, it's always there. I don't care when you go, it's always there. It's always crystal clear, and it's always cold. Amen. Isn't it so good? I, you know what? I, I, I feel bad for a generation of young adults that grew up never knowing what well water tastes like. Hey, man, I'd rather have that any day of the week than that stuff they got now. And, brother, I'm telling you what, whatever it is that you pay $2 for a little bottle, four out of a machine, I, I, I'd feel so guilty if I was in people, I wouldn't be able to sell the stuff. Hey, man, I come from a whole generation, maybe you did too, that drank out of the garden hose. Hey, man, and lived to tell about it. Played in the played in the uh, uh, in the woods and and stayed out till dark and and didn't have a cell phone strapped to my hip and and all of those things that we just can't go without today, Amen. I'll tell this on myself. I went to go to church last, um, not not last Sunday. We can go Sunday. Got about halfway to the church. Realize I forgot my cell phone. I almost turned around and went back. It's only eight miles from the house. And I thought, why do I need that stupid thing? To go, I can walk from here. Amen. But we get so conditioned about things that we think we need. Amen. Let me tell you what, I can live without a phone, Brother Jay. I can't live one day without Jesus. Amen. 
I can't live one day without his peace and his comfort. Yeah. I wonder tonight, are you thirsty? Hey man, have you had plenty to drink or are you in this desert land? Are you dried out? Are you looking for a drink tonight? You've tried everything else and nothing will satisfy it. Hey man, I promise you this, my friend, that this living water will satisfy your longing. So we stand across the building tonight. Brother Jim comes and gets a song. Lost friend, if you're here tonight, and you don't know this Jesus that we spoke of, hey man, just like this woman at the well, he knows just exactly where you are tonight. He knows just exactly what you need. And he made it a point to come your way so that he could speak with you, and that he could give you what you need. Hey, amen, I believe if you'll call out on him tonight, he'll make you the same offer that he did that Samaritan woman. He said, I'll give you living water that you would never thirst again. Christian friend, amen, we still live in this world, amen. And there's still times that we go through dry spells. There's still times that, that, that we uh, have that thirst even ourselves. You know what? I believe it's healthy uh, uh, to uh, uh, be constantly reminded that we are nothing without him. Amen? I, I think it's healthy that we spend our time in God's word because it will, uh, 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 it will bring that comfort to our life. And I'll tell you this too. It can bring comfort to somebody else. Amen. When somebody is going through a situation in their life and you're in God's word and they come to you, you'll know what to say. Amen. Amen. Because you read it in the word. And he will bring that to remembrance and you can share that. But if you can't, if you don't know what God's word said, how are you going to be a help to somebody else? Amen. That's a different message. Amen. Tonight, if you're thirsty, Hey man, Jesus is here tonight and he's offering a drink of this water. Where'd you get that water? It came from the rock. Hey man, it came from the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ our Savior. Without him, we had no hope. Go ahead, Brother Jen. 307. As they're saying, would there be one tonight that needs to pray? <laughs> 